yo what's up guys it's your boy dino and we back again with another video full of crazy clips from all over the world i hope everybody's doing well let's hop right into it Hmm, that was pretty cool looking. Those were obviously two different people though, two different tunes. Becoming digital surveillance precincts with so-called smart city programs being rolled out across the country. Invasive technology such as facial recognition cameras, license plate readers, smart lights, smart poles, smart cars, smart neighbourhoods, smart homes and smart appliances all connected to wireless networks and communicating with each other. So what's wrong with that? Technology is good, isn't it? All this is for your safety, security and convenience, isn't it? Well, let me tell you, your streets are spying on you, your mobile phone is spying on you, your cities are spying on you, and the infrastructure for future lockdowns is being put into place right now. Don't be fooled. You're being set up to be tracked through your movements and through the future of your digital wallets. By handing over your data, you're handing over the ability to monitor your behaviour, which will soon be turned into a social credit score. And mm -hmm. once the central bank digital currencies are in place, you won't get to spend your money without approval. Digital ID will soon become a reality in Australia. Many other countries are already rolling these systems out. Countries like Canada, Scotland and many others. Eventually, you won't be able to access any government or public services and you won't be able to travel across borders or access healthcare or the internet without a digital ID. Mm -hmm. Think you won't comply? I think you will. The last two yeah, years were the dress rehearsal will. and we fell for it hook, line and sinker. Australians are sleepwalking into this technocratic future. And while we're sitting around, scratching our chins, trying to work out whether this is really happening, Australia is drifting towards a dystopian digital future. Yeah, it's pretty crazy, man. China's already like that. America's starting to be like that. Now Australia's starting to be that way. That's wild, man. Like Black Mirror, but in real life. This carnival ride starts to lose control as it begins to fall further and further backwards. Thankfully, nearby people acted quickly and started to use their bodies to weigh the machine down. The guy who jumped on first is a real hero and saved a potential catastrophe. It must yeah, have been a terrifying experience. Wow. And thankfully, no one was harmed. Yeah, now shut it down for the rest of the night and figure out what's wrong with it. Did you know that Bill Gates is currently the largest owner of farmland here in America? In fact, just a few weeks ago, Bill Gates was granted the legal authority to purchase another 2,100 acres of land over in North Dakota. And that was all despite heavy protests by the local residents there. With this new purchase, Bill Gates now officially owns 270,000 acres of land across 20 different states. And if you look at a map, you'll see that his largest plots are in Nebraska, Louisiana, Arizona, Florida, Illinois, Idaho, as well as Ohio. However, the big question here is obviously this. Why would a tech billionaire like Bill Gates be buying up so much farmland? And as of right now, he hasn't disclosed his real intent. However, given the fact that lawmakers across the political aisle are now warning of possible food shortages, and with Bill Gates himself funding research in both synthetic meat as well as bug-based food, well, we can safely assume one of two courses of action. Either he'll work at consolidating the production of food here in America, and or he might be working to produce alternative foods for the American consumer. Only time will tell. Yeah, only time will tell. That is really weird, though. I'm not so sure that, like, I really like Bill Gates buying up all the farmland like that. Ah.
These are cool looking, man. They say we've intercepted them. Two bombers. That's crazy. That's wild. I bet it's fun though. Dragons were real, and I'll explain. So around the same time period in you know China, South America, Africa, all these different Rome, all these places, images depicted people fighting dragons. And every dragon was slightly different, but it was all a giant scaly animal that could fly. So when you break that down, you think about the fact that large birds had a hard time being fossilized because their bones are so porous. So because they have like hollowish bones, they break down very easily and they don't fossilize. So it's like the science is saying that if there were lizards big enough to fly around and eat people, they didn't have bones that could fossilize wow yeah i mean that makes sense that they would have bones that are really light full of like porous holes or whatever what the f oh what? is that that was weird what the that it honestly looked like his face in a mirror, though. Bro, what? Yeah, see, there's was the mirror. That? There's totally your face in the mirror. Yeah, there's totally you standing right in the like perfect spot for your face to reflect. <laughs> the externalization of God is spiritual robbery. Now we have all been robbed by the institutions that have systematically organized our minds to only be able to perceive the exoteric side of religion, which is perceived as the logical, historical, or chronological aspect of religion. Now the issue is the masses don't know the esoteric side of religion, and they don't know that it is being kept away hidden from them, for they lack knowledge of self. Once you awaken from your spiritual amnesia, you will recognize that you are God. Not to be confused with the God that created the four corners of the earth, the planets, and the seven continents, but a God, a physical expression of God. Now, God, such as the roots of a tree, remain hidden to those who are unaware that we are the branches. How would the appearance separate but we're connected? You'd go up to a tree and touch a leaf and say, I'm still touching a tree. You would simply say, I'm touching a leaf on a tree because you recognize that it is connected, but we have an inability to perceive our connection due to the fact that it extends beyond our physical comprehension. Interesting. Interesting, interesting. It's a lot to unpack in that. When I would say something's really good, is always being conscientious of what you eat. So I limit high fructose corn syrup, like processed sugars. I don't do any of that garbage. I don't do caffeine. Bro, think about the most basic common things that everybody has. Eating, sleeping, exercising, the most basic element. What was the last time, bro, that you were like, I feel hungry, I'm not gonna eat. I can move. What if what you're experiencing isn't actual hunger? What if what you're experiencing is addiction? Holy shit. You're right. Wait, wait, wait. Huh, huh. But like my, my lifestyle, like I'm always like out and about and never really home to cook. So like I have to be home cooking, bro. It's about being aware, like maybe when you feel like, hmm, I'm gonna go to McDonald's or I'm gonna go to Taco Bell, maybe it's not that you're hungry, maybe your body's craving the poison now. What if the food is designed specifically to make you an addict? Gatorade, right? You talk about electrolytes and it boosts you up. Do you know that when they're putting it into the actual plastic bottles, it's boiling hot. And what is boiling plastic, right? Boiling hot water or liquid in plastic. It dissolves the plastic into microplastic. Into the, into the, into the, into the drink. So you drink Why plastic? Microplastics. And there's petroleum-based ingredients in it as well. A lot of stuff. Yeah. All right, you guys are telling us all this information, but guess what? You're gonna die anyway. So what? But what? Here's, but here's the thing: is how do you want to live? Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's not how do you want to die. It's how do you want to live? Like, do you want to wake up brain fog, like an accident fucked up, or do you want to wake up in a scenario where you do you feel empowered to take over, to conquer? Multiple scenarios. One, your body only has X amount of energy, right, that it can expend. So the question is, is it going to expend the energy on repairing your body, or expend the energy on digesting the food? Mm -hmm. Can't do both. I mean, fair point. It can, though. Like, fair point. I get what you're saying.
This man is attacked by a strange interdimensional creature. Oh yeah, a turkey. It's some kind of shape-shifting creature. Oh, and it had to yell over me. Did you see that? And so I guess a turkey is shape-shifting now. <laughs> These two lovebirds were dating for two years. That was until this September when the girlfriend poisoned her boyfriend to death in a very not well thought out plan of getting his $30 million in inheritance. This is the wild story of Ina Knorr trying to get Stephen Riley's $30 million in inheritance. This is Ina Knorr. She is currently in jail in North Dakota. She fits the perfect physical look of somebody that would poison her boyfriend. And I was shocked to learn that she's 47 years old. By my estimation, looking at her, she looks a solid 65, 66, 67 maybe. Mm. But she instead is a tough 47. In August, Stephen Riley learned that he was going to get $30 million in inheritance. He then told his girlfriend, Ina, you're not my tax bracket anymore. I'm getting an upgrade in my girlfriend, so see ya. So what did Ina do? Naturally, she decided to poison him. Ina thought, probably thanks to a meme she saw on Facebook, this is the most Facebook couple ever, or ex couple, RIP, Stephen. Um, she thought that, hey, we've been together for 10 years, so due to a law, we are technically considered married. This is true in many states. So once Stephen Riley dies, Ina thought she would get at least half of his money. She thought, oh, 15 million? It's not 30 million, but it's, it's not bad. Turns out, Ina forgot to check if that law was written in the state that she was living in, North Dakota. Turns out it was not. So even in the 0.00001% chance that this, she somehow pulled this off by, I don't even know, a higher force, she wouldn't have even gotten the money. Also, if you're wondering how she poisoned him, it was evil. Steven, his friends, and her were going to the airport to sign a document in order for him to get the inheritance. Before that, Ina decided to poison Steven. When they're driving to the airport, Steven starts to get really sick. His friends are like, oh my God, we got to go to the hospital. Ina goes, no, 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 no. I'm medically trained. He's just having a heat stroke. It was September in North Dakota. I'll take him home. He'll be fine. She takes him home, puts him in the back room. The next day, his friends come and say, hey, how's Steven doing? And she goes, oh, uh, he actually just went to the walking clinic. His friends are like, wait a second. Ina has said multiple times that she was going to poison Steven. Let's go see if he's actually at the walking clinic. He's not. He's not at any ER either. So they call the police. The police come and Steven is 98% dead. And here's the kicker. The $30 million that Steven Riley thought he was inheriting was actually an online scam. Reports are now suggesting that Riley apparently received an email from a person who claimed to be a lawyer for a quote-unquote distant relative and wanted to meet him at Mano International Airport to sign off on the inheritance cash. So essentially, this was a Nigerian prince who ran a scam on this guy. And he believed it so much, he told his girlfriend of 10 years that we're through, and then she killed him. This money was never real. Quite frankly... I want to laugh, but this is kind of sad. What? That's terrible. That, that whole thing. That's just that uh, the whole story there. That's terrible. No, that's uh, this is not a UFO. <laughs> that's um. It's like, you know how you have the metal detectors that you walk around with in your hand and over the ground? Well, that's just one of those, but on a helicopter, and it's looking deep underground. You get what I'm saying? Everything in creation spins and vibrates. Everything has its own prime resonance frequency. This is the most basic fundamental demonstration how sound and resonance manifests into physical form. Every frequency has its own specific shape, a prime resonance frequency. Are you only looking at a two-dimensional representation of a three-dimensional effect? Eric Larson is the guy that created the cymoscope, and this is when you can suddenly see how the human voice has potential to create infinitely. This is from Hans Jenny's brilliant video. This is powder on a metal plate. It's not a liquid or a jelly. It's powder. You can see landscapes being formed here. 
A here is the effect of vibration on a specific substance, lycopodium powder or spores of the club moss. We have strewn it uniformly on a diaphragm of stretched paper with a diameter of about 30 centimeters, which we now excite by vibration. This causes the powder to clump. And the more intense the vibration, the more piles there are. If the note is louder, that is to say, if the amplitude is increased, these masses of powder move to the center and make a kind of dust cloud there. Sometimes it is whipped up into a cloud, as it is now, and sometimes it reverts to the solid dust particle form. These changes are caused by the differences in the intensity of the tone, that is, by the different amplitudes. And when you bring a magnet towards a ferrofluid, what does the ferrofluid do? It forms beautiful cones. And now you start seeing mm. how sound and magneticism plays a role in nature, in structuring the flowers and the shapes of trees and and everything around us is driven by sound and the magnetic fields that actually create the shapes around us. So magnets give off sound. Do you, we all know what speakers are. So there you go. You've got uh, electricity. It comes out of a plug. It runs down a wire. It goes into a speaker, a magnet. The magnet reacts and the magnet makes the air move and creates sound. And the reverse is possible as well. It works one way and it works the other way. And this is where we start getting into the real understanding of some of the masters. It's wild. That's some cool stuff, man. So everything has a vibratory frequency and everything is structured and formed through vibratory frequencies that create magnetic fields. It's really some in-depth stuff. I wish I could go into it. It would just, it would take an hour and a half just getting started. On the corner of Columbus and 86, I've been going up and down the blocks, just garbage everywhere. They cut back the sanitation budget. No overtime for sanitation, guys and gals. And it's just garbage everywhere, everywhere you look. And it gets worse. They, they need to pick this trash up at least once a day. Now they're lucky if it's three times a week. And you're concerned about rats, Eric Adams? This is the kind of stuff that brings out the four-legged rats at night who are very nocturnal and, by the way, very hungry and procreating like there's no tomorrow. Where there's two rats, there'll soon be a hundred rats. I mean, it's not So, wrong. hey, get back to the task of doing the basics. Pave the potholes, pick up the garbage, and keep the street safe. And maybe, just maybe, you can get back on track. I doubt it, but maybe. Yeah, maybe. I don't know, man. I have never been to New York, so I don't know how, like, dirty it actually is in the streets or, like, how many rats or, like, roaches. I don't know anything about that because I've never actually been there. But I've heard some stories from friends who used to live there. A number of things that uh, I've heard uh, from people in the Pentagon that the buzzword in the, in the secret of secrets in the Pentagon is uh, the Sumerian gods are returning. And that's what they're referring to is that whole area uh, uh, that uh, Peter. Wow! Can you repeat that again, just in case anybody missed it? The well, buzzword uh, in in the Pentagon, and you know the military circles that are in the know about the cover up here. Um, the they kind of in, in whispered tones talk about the return of the Sumerian gods, and they're talking about the uh, what we would call aliens or fallen angels returning uh, into the Middle East, uh, into old Sumer area. The Anunnaki. Well, mm -hmm. Could be. Under the other the ancient names. Do yeah. you think that has anything to do with why we're in Iraq? Mm mm mm. That's a lot to think about. About Nibiru, Blue Kachina, Red Kachina, all that. What do you guys think about that? What the fuck, Putin? Why do you want it back? What could possibly be in Alaska that you want it back, okay? There's only 733,000 people ish. It's like 20, 20 census, right? So it's a little old. We're rounding up that number because it's so old. Anyway, that's not the point. The point is, what is there? There's not enough people for you to commit a genocide. So is it gold or is it oil? Why do you want it? <laughs> yeah, why do you want Alaska back, dude? Like, and wh who, who do you think you are trying to pass laws saying that 
Uh, oh, well, this new law I passed makes the sale of Alaska illegal this many years later. Like, it don't, it don't work that way, man. Like, <laughs> all right. I don't know that I'd want to be in a vehicle that's in the middle of a tornado, even if it was bolted to the ground or anything, but that's, it's pretty cool. Glory be to God. Chile, not natural, not natural heat, not a natural occurrence in nature, smart cities. Santiago, Satan, go, Chile. Ingredients for a smart city, February 5th, 2014. Mm -hmm. Infrastructure, mobility, and society. General plan, 2030, Maui. Yeah, direct energy. Put the W together, but don't do the do. Chile. You live at the heart of our creator, the sun or the center, the center. That's Maui. That's Lahaina. It's your bird eye, your third eye. Yeah, welcome, welcome to school, Skull Island, the Sheol, it's Africa. So while we're too busy being fascinated on Kill, see, Travis, Taylor Swift, making a swift move, ch -ch -ch, and everything else going on, going hand in hand with this pre-coded bullshit, we're distracted about the Grammys. They're not even talented. She's rewriting the... N no... It doesn't matter what they say on the world stage. They are absolutely not doing anything good for anybody. No. So this is the arrogant smile. This is what's happening. Whose team are you guys on? This evil, super bull, superb, owl, B low, B owl from Bohemian Grove, grave. So don't be dumb. Don't be dumb. Stadium, stay dumb. Ain't nobody throwing pellets here. No, that's John Pelletier. Coded reality. Wake up. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Guy's a little bit out there, but uh, <laughs> he did have some fair points. The craziest thing about these Chile fires is that it's literally a smart city location. Whole conferences about turning this place into a smart city. And the fact that it's spreading so uniform and in such a distinct line, which you will see here in the radar. And someone happened to notice there's another blue anomaly going on with this stuff. Remember the blue from Maui? Mm-hmm. Almost like it might be one of these. D-E-W. You want to know more about this stuff? You can go on my main page, Ashley Smith, but with three eyes. I'll tag myself below. Thus, apparently Maui was rich in lithium, and just mm -hmm. days before this, they are planning on nationalizing their lithium industry. What a great way to clear land unofficially. Again, TikTok, we are theorizing here, but, you know, helping people potentially connect dots that could or could not be there. Three. Yeah, there's a lot to look into with that. 
You should go research quite a bit about that. President Biden, do you have any comment on Russia deploying nuclear weapons into space? <laughs> President Biden, is that the classified information Russia consider? <laughs> Are you concerned about Russia sending nukes to their space? Hmm. No comments, huh? A serious warning has been put out by Congress that there is a national security threat for which must be declassified so the American people can know. And uh, according to all the latest reports, that threat is Russian space nukes. That's right. It's as crazy as Jewish space lasers. But the fear is that Russia is going to put nukes in outer space. They haven't yet. But the American people must know. And assuming that is actually what they're warning about. Yeah, spare me, dude. I really don't care. That's such like, you know, we talk about it quite a bit on the show. Nukes are like 100 year old technology or 80 year old technology at this point. They have much more powerful weapons, much more dangerous weapons. I'm more concerned about the potentials of Havana syndrome and maybe gain of function research. But OK, OK. I mean, space nukes is scary. Sure. Many people think this is a ploy. Because the House is refusing to take up a vote on the Ukraine war funding bill so they can put out this ridiculous narrative that Russia, if they're not stopped, they're going to put nukes in outer space. Well, I mean, the whole thought process behind that is that these people are having is that they're going to put nukes in outer space and then they're going to fly them all around the other side of the planet and then they're going to blow up America with it. And it's like, I mean, it's a little harder to do than that. <laughs> you can say it all you want, but it's, it's it's a little harder than just doing it. Yep, I agree with you. This one kind of stinks, doesn't it? Really, really smells, considering mm -hmm. that we have this flying above our heads right now. So what's this? This is the Boeing X-37. It's a top secret United States military experimental space drone. Technically, they call it a reusable robotic spacecraft mm -hmm. yep december 29th 2023 we launched this thing so it's up there right now what's in it we don't know they're just doing experiments maybe with space lasers <laughs> the dr evil thing yep and just like starlink it's owned by elon musk oh and guess how it got into orbit it was launched on a SpaceX rocket. Mm -hmm. So I agree with you. It does smell like BS because if they expect us to believe that this is a real threat because we have a robotic military drone in space that's probably got something to do with defending satellites. Uh, you know, that's just a wild guess, right? Mm -hmm. Well, I guess they do expect us to believe that. But until then, we're going to keep on digging. Remember. Jesus is still in control. He's still our Lord and Savior. Uh, he makes life better. He makes you better life. God bless you. All right. So the reason that America would say, oh, there's nothing to worry about there. We don't got to worry about anything. Russian nukes in space. Who cares? Don't worry. It'll never happen. It's because we already have stuff up there, man. Take a look at this video, because the video you're watching right now is not real. The creators of ChatGPT just unveiled a new AI video generator called Sora, which can generate a minute worth of video from a single text prompt. And all of the footage you are seeing right now is completely AI generated. Mind you, this is what AI generated videos looked like just a year ago. So it's mm -hmm. safe to say that we've come a long way in a short amount of time, but we come a little bit too far because with the medium's rapid growth it's only a matter of time until we start to see its real world impact additionally OpenAI has already come out saying that they will be restricting sora because of its safety concerns as this technology makes the production of misleading content more accessible than ever now that said this technology is still a work in progress but still this is what ai generated videos looked like a year ago so this is just crazy hmm, it is crazy it's absolutely nuts I mean, OpenAI hasn't released it to the public yet, but like they've shown us what it can do and they have a website up where you can go look at the things that it can do. We are back with a tragic story highlighting the grave nature of the country's border crisis. An illegal immigrant charged in a hit and run that killed a 10 year old boy as he was walking home from school. The suspect is being held by ICE agents in Texas. 
Officers found and arrested that guy that you see in the picture the day of the crash. It happened in Midland, Texas. According to the county sheriff's office, he'd been deported at least five times in the past. Ten-year-old A.J. Wise died to his injuries last Friday morning. Mm, that's no good at all. That's no good at all. Mm. Good morning, Patriots. This is Trucker Jake. Let's talk about the New York City trucker boycott. Of course, overnight, liberals all have become experts on the trucking industry. They all know logistics forward and backwards. Well, we're all going to lose our jobs. We're all going to be replaced by AI. Here's the thing. We have a deficit in this country of 85,000 truck drivers. You want to do AI? Bring it. We could use the help. But it's not going to happen in my lifetime. It's not going to happen in your lifetime. It's not going to happen in your grandkids' lifetime. Mm -hmm. And then you're going to say, oh, the, the, the illegals, they're going to take your jobs. Really? The illegals? They can't pass a background check, can't pass a drug screening, and then you got the language barrier? What insurance company is going to hire someone who cannot pass a background check? So anyway, truckers, you're safe. Those of you truckers who have to work, totally get it. You do you. No one's going to eat your lunch if you're not going to, you know, be part of the boycott. But those of you who are part of the boycott, boycott, God bless you. This is Trucker Jake. God bless President Trump. God bless MAGA America. God bless you truckers out there, and y'all have a great day. That's wild. I didn't even, like, realize there was the trucker boycott going on for a while, and I had to go look into it. And it's nuts, man. For the first and only time, it's February 19th, 2024. Here's today's breath of fresh air. The amount of coral that covers our planet is larger than previously thought by as much as double, made evident by a new high resolution assessment, which shows about 348,000 square kilometers, an area larger than New Mexico. And any energy project proposal on US tribal land must now gain the consent of the respective tribe to be approved by FERC, bringing some long overdue power and input back to many tribes. And and the River Mercy has had perhaps the greatest river recovery Europe has seen, moving from biologically dead to filled with 45 species of fish and sharks, thanks to environmental improvements with continued action needed to keep this up. Mm. And New York Heat Act was proposed to reduce fossil fuel subsidies and incentives for utilities to help accelerate the electrification of buildings and to cap energy bills at 6% of income. And that's the good news I found today, but let me know if I missed anything else. I'm Jacob, and stick around for daily good news. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. This is boring. So let's start with the first point. We already know that the enormous heating of magma expands the volume and exerts more pressure on the thin crust of the planet. This leads to the expansion of the planet and fractures in the Earth's crust, beginning first at its thinnest parts which is along the boundaries of lithospheric plates and the ocean floor. In this example, we see the theory turning into reality because the number of earthquakes in the ocean floor has increased significantly since 1995. Mm. You can see this now on the graph. Yeah, so their whole thing is like, oh, the earth is doomed and we did it and we can't fix it now. So I just want everybody to know and like still nobody's paying any attention. That's it. I mean, it it goes. That's that's already better than most people. <laughs> Tonight, many citizens of New York City are mourning the death of a high-flying celebrity. Flacco, a rare Eurasian owl, became a sensation after escaping from the Central Park Zoo after someone vandalized his enclosure last Aww. year. The owl foiled attempts to capture him, so he was allowed to live in the wild after proving that he could survive. But last night, Flacco flew into a building on Manhattan's Upper West Side and died. He was 13 years old, and he'll be missed. No, oh, poor guy. It's a, a U.S. service member self-immolated in front of the Israeli embassy in Washington, D.C. Um, just a few hours ago today. This is the second person to self-immolate um, in the United States uh, for the cause of the Palestinian people and the ongoing, um, you know what, going on there. Self-immolation as an act of protest has been around for a very long time, but it exists 
uh, in more modern history as uh, a tool to protest really dramatic uh, repressive institutions. Um, there's a very famous image of a monk self-immolating in protest of South Vietnam's treatment of Buddhists at the time. It became an album cover for Rage Against the Machine. I think you know the image I'm talking about if you Google Rage Against the Machine album cover. Also on Earth Day in 2022, a man named Wynne Bruce um, self-immolated as well on the steps of the Supreme Court in protest of climate change. You hear about these stories of people doing things like this, and um, when it is for the right reasons, I cannot help but feel like these are acts of radical compassion. These are people who literally have too much empathy in their body that they cannot go on living anymore if they know that a certain amount of injustice exists in the world, or there is a sense of fatalism about how bad things are getting for groups of people or for all of humanity. This is still developing. Um, so I hope to have more to say about it in the future. And it's just kind of heartbreaking that it comes to moments like this. Yeah, that is pretty sad. All right, so I got one more for you guys. Harrowing body camera footage showing the moment a Florida deputy saved a six-month-old baby girl who was trapped in her car seat after a motorcyclist a motorcyclist crashed into her mom's car at 100 miles per hour. Watch this. Is your baby okay? No! She's right there! No! Please see, see in the EMS. Oh, my baby! Is she dead? Is she dead? I... Baby Lola is alive and remains in critical condition. That hero officer, Charlotte County, Florida, Deputy Sergeant Dave Musgrove joins us now, along with Lola's mom, Kaylee Foley, and her mother, Lisa. Good morning to you all. Kaylee, I can't imagine what it's like to hear that footage. <clears throat> Apparently, the baby was okay, though, so that's good. Anyways, that's another video for the archives. I hope everyone had a good time hanging out. Had some pretty cool clips today. Do me a favor if you haven't already, go ahead and hit that like, subscribe, and the notification bell. Yes, Dino. Okay, Dino. That way you can get updated every time that I post a new video like this. And I hope you all have a great rest of your day, morning, evening, afternoon, whatever it might be for you. And until next time, peace.